this right here is a human sperm. What's a human sperm? It is a male gamete. Since it's a gamete, it's obviously haploid. That is, it contains half the number of chromosomes present in a diploid cell or only one out of the two sets of chromosome. It's a male gamete which is actually motile. The motility is present due to the presence of the tail. A typical human sperm is divisible into four major parts. There's the head of the sperm, which looks like the head of a spear, bhala ko tauko. There's the neck of the sperm, which is narrow and connects the head of the sperm with the piece which is present at the middle of the sperm, so called middle piece. And finally, a, the structure of a sperm, which looks like a tail, so called a tail. So the four major parts are head, neck, middle piece, tail. A sperm is divided into four major parts. There's the head of the sperm, neck of the sperm, middle piece of the sperm, and the tail of the sperm. Now let's look at all these individual parts of the sperm one by one in more detail. Human sperm is after all a cell, right? More specifically, it's a human, I mean, it's an animal cell. And the outermost covering of any animal cell is plasma membrane. So the outermost covering of human sperm is also plasma membrane. This black color line that I have used to form the diagram of sperm represents the plasma membrane. Inside the plasma membrane is the cytoplasm. And on this cytoplasm, you can find the organelles present within the human sperm. That's exactly what we are going to see. We are going to see the different structures that are present inside a human sperm. So let's look at them one by one. First, the head region. This is the head of the sperm, which looks like the head of a spear. The head of the sperm contains two major parts. There's the nucleus, which has a slight depression at the bottom and a cap like structure forming the cap for the nucleus called acrosomal cap or gallia capitis. It is composed of two parts, the acrosome, which is made up of Golgi bodies and the membrane covering the acrosome. So the head contains two major parts, the nucleus of the cell and the acrosomal cap, which forms the cap of the nucleus. The acrosomal cap contains acrosome and the membrane covering that acrosome, which is also called gallia capitis. The head is connected with the middle piece with the help of a very narrow neck. This narrow neck contains two centriole. One centriole is present towards the head region, more specifically right beneath the depression present at the bottom of the nucleus. So this is the depression which is present at the bottom of the nucleus and right beneath this depression, you can find a centriole. This centriole is present at the proximal end of the sperm, so called proximal centriole. The second centriole is present somewhere at the middle, in the middle of the neck of the sperm. This centriole is present towards the distal end. That's why also called distal centriole. The distal centriole of a human sperm gives rise to axial filament. This filament like structure that you can see at the middle of the sperm that is running throughout the middle piece as well as the tail region is the axial filament. The portion of the axial filament that is present within the middle piece is wrapped spirally with the help of a mitochondria. And this spiral mitochondria is called Nebankand. It has been given a special name, Nebankand. So Nebankand is nothing but the spiral mitochondria which is present within the human sperm in the middle piece of the human sperm. All these different structures present in human sperm have their individual function. But first, let me revise the structures. So a human sperm can be divided into four major portions, the head of the sperm, neck of the sperm, middle piece of the sperm, and the tail of the sperm. The head of the sperm contains two major parts, the nucleus and the acrosomal cap. The acrosomal cap, which is also called gallia capitis, is formed of acrosome and the membrane covering the acrosome. 
Then there's a very narrow neck which connects the head of the sperm with the middle piece of the sperm. This narrow neck contains two centrioles. One centriole is present at the proximal end, so called proximal centriole, and the other centriole is present right below that centriole or towards the distal end, so called distal centriole. The distal centriole gives rise to axial filament which runs throughout the middle piece and the tail of the sperm. It is the axial filament due to which the sperm is able to move or gain motility. The part of the axial filament that is present within the middle piece contains a spiral mitochondria. I've used a red color to show the spiral mitochondria. So there's a mitochondria which is spirally coiled and this spiral mitochondria has been given a special name of its own and it's called Neburn Kern. All these structures have their own individual functions. Let's look at them. First, acrosome. Acrosome which is present at the tip of the sperm is responsible for the secretion of enzymes such as hyaluronidase and acrosin. Both these enzymes are responsible for the penetration of sperm. What do I mean by this? So here's the thing. Here's your egg, right? This egg is covered by multiple membranes. For the sperm to fertilize this egg, it needs to penetrate through all these layers and finally reach inside the cell or inside the egg. And the function of dissolving these layers so that the sperm can finally enter inside the egg is done by these enzymes which are secreted by the acrosome of the sperm. So basically the tip of the sperm contains acrosome. Acrosome secretes enzymes that dissolve the wall of the egg and helps the sperm penetrate the egg for fertilization. Second is nucleus. Well, nucleus contains genetic material, genetic material. Third is proximal centriole, proximal centriole. Proximal centriole forms spindle fibers Four, first zygotic division. So once the sperm enters the egg and fertilizes the egg, zygote is formed. This zygote then divides mitotically to form an embryo. For the first mitotic division or for the first zygotic division to take place, the spindle fibers that are responsible are secreted or are formed by the proximal centriole. See, the sperm fertilizes the egg to form a zygote. This zygote divides mitotically to form an embryo. During the first mitotic division or during the first zygotic division, the spindle fibers required for the division are formed by proximal centriole of the sperm. Number four, distal centriole. Distal centriole is responsible for the formation of axial filament. Number five, axial filament. Axial filament is made up of microtubules and these microtubules are arranged in 9 plus 2 pattern. So there's 9 plus 2 arrangement of microtubules and it is due to the 9 plus 2 arrangement of the microtubules of axial filament that motility is possible. The tail of the sperm is able to move or wriggle and the sperm is able to move due to the motility which is provided by the axial filament. If axial filament didn't have the 9 plus 2 microtubule arrangement, the tail would not have been able to move. So it is due to the axial filament which is present throughout the middle piece and the tail that the sperm can even move. So it provides motility to sperm. But for the sperm to move, for the tail of the sperm to wriggle, for the sperm to go from one place to another, for the sperm to travel throughout the uterus, it needs energy because it is doing some work. And this energy for the sperm to move or travel is provided by mitochondria. And what's the mitochondria which is present in sperm? 
it's the neighbor current present in the middle speed middle piece of sperm so neighbor current which is the spiral mitochondria present in the middle piece of sperm it provides energy energy for motility so here are the different structures with their function number 1 at the tip of the sperm you can find acrosome acrosome secretes enzymes that are responsible for the penetration of the sperm into the egg for fertilization basically acrosome release enzymes that help to dissolve the various layers that are present surrounding the egg so that the sperm can finally penetrate through those layers and enter the egg number 2 is the nucleus that contains the genetic materials number 3 is the proximal centriole which is responsible for the formation of spindle fibers during the first zygotic division when a sperm fertilizes an egg it forms a zygote this zygote divides mitotically to form an embryo during the first mitotic division of the zygote spindle fibers required for mitosis are formed by the proximal centriole of the sperm then distal centriole distal centriole is responsible for the formation of axial filament this axial filament or axoneme contains 9 plus 2 arrangement of microtubules and it is due to the 9 plus 2 arrangement of microtubules present in the axial filament that the tail of the sperm can move the tail of the sperm can move due to axial filament and for this energy is required and the energy required for the movement of the sperm or for the sperm to travel is provided by the neighbor current or the spiral mitochondria which is found within the middle piece of the sperm and that's it